Hi, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about my tips on how to do gel nails. I'm gonna give you a couple quick tips on how to keep them from lifting and keep them nice and slick and shiny and then what's in my nail kit. If you're interested in that, keep watching. Welcome to my me time. I love getting my nails done, specifically I love gels. I know for a fact if you go to a good gel place with nice healthy polish and good technicians, you can have a manicure that lasts you over a month long and just grows out. I love that, especially that I show my hands a lot with what I do. It's a very important thing to me. Also, I look forward to so much every month picking out a new design, a new theme, nail art, colors. I love it. It's just mm. Mm. And when the pandemic came, everyone started doing their own nails at home. <laughs> and so I, I can't believe I waited so long to do this because nails are so important to me. But once I started, like it just became my little hobby. And I'm trying not to exploit all of my hobbies for capitalism's sake, but there's no ethical consumption, so I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna show you all the different things that helped me create my nail art. <laughs> Don't look at that hand. One of them is broken. I am not a nail technician. I, I do have to say that I'm not a nail technician. This is just what I've learned from watching my wonderful nail technicians throughout many, many years doing my own nails and little tricks I've picked up along the way of doing my own. I also have to shout out Color Camp. I've been going to Color Camp since 2017. It's a wonderful vegan nail salon in LA that's been closed down because of the pandemic and it just, it started that love affair that hasn't gone away. These are my tips in order of how I'm doing my nails. So hopefully if you're listening along, you'll be able to hear them as you're doing them. That's just how I like to be taught. So the first step that I swear by keeping my gels on and secured is tapering the nail when I shape it. What I mean by that is if you look at like an almond shaped nail, it kind of goes in at the edges. When a nail grows out, it's a little bit wider. It's easier to snag on things. And that's where I find it kind of snags on little towels or pieces of clothing or your hair and it will pull and start lifting the edges. So I always, always, no matter what shape I'm doing, whether it's oval, almond, square, I don't really do square, but like squoval, I always make sure to taper it in to going into like the center a little bit. So it makes it makes the fingers look a little more narrow. I think it's really aesthetically pleasing because it really elongates and gives you those like model hands. But also it really does shorten the nail so it's not as snaggable, I guess. That's not a word, but we're gonna go with it. I'm a grown ass woman, I can say whatever I want. Two, when you're pregnant, prepping your nails. Don't forget to lightly buff them. Your nail naturally has a little bit of sheen. It has some oils on there. So having a really light buff, so a really fine grit kind of buffer, you don't have to like file them down like you would an acrylic nail or what are those, those builder gels that you have to like really file down the nail. You just want it to not be slick, kind of as if you were painting wood or doing an arts and craft on something slick and shiny. You would want to remove that sheen so there's a little bit more surface area to volume ratio for the paint to grip onto. Don't go crazy, don't ruin your nails. It just needs a little bit of a buff. That's the foundation of your house, of your nail house. My nail technician at Color Camp, uh, two of mine, Violet and Hannah, I love them so much. They would spend extra time making sure they had buffed around the cuticle and like the nail bed area to make sure everything stayed and like I would have the best grow out. It was so satisfying, no lifting. And I took that to heart and I'm doing it on myself. The next thing is dehydrating your nails. You're gonna really wanna dehydrate them either with rubbing alcohol, that's my preferred method just because I already have it, or you can get a nail dehydrator. I like to just run it over the nails right after buffing to get rid of any dirt, dust, fibers, I really like to use little sheets over cotton balls just because those little fuzzies get trapped everywhere and then they get inside the paint and that is not okay. So if you have like a lint-free paper towel, I have these little sheets I'll talk about in a second and then rubbing that all over, making sure to get around your cuticle area after buffing and letting them dry. Now we're gonna start with the painting. First and foremost, get a good quality paint. I feel like that's, that should just be unspoken. I was sent ad PR product. I kind of bullied them into sending. I mean, I reached out to them and I was like, give me the paint. But Madam Glam has some great polish. I have loved working with it. I think it's super forgiving. I have owned quite a bit of nail polish 
but never gel and I fell in love with it. It is so easy to use. This is not an ad for them. Um, they did send me stuff for free, but like I'm gonna buy the rest of everything else when it goes on sale. So I use all products by Madame Glam just because I'm an influencer and I was sent those things. I have a code, this is the code. If you want to check out, you'll get this much percentage off. And I'll link their website down below. I just also really like that they have a really wide selection of young, vibrant, fun colors. I like pastels and brights and fun, fruity pops of color on my nails because like, life is short, you deserve fun nails. And their selection is amazing. These are the different colors I have as of now. To me, what makes a really good quality gel is of course cruelty free and vegan it's so easy to help make the world a little less cruel by investing in better products and i feel like oftentimes you vote with your dollar and that is something i believe everyone should invest in and it's super easy and the quality you do not have to sacrifice on the quality because another thing i think that is really good in a gel is that it's really forgiving like if you have a fuzzy that falls in you can pick it out and it'll reform and get really smooth and shiny on top and i really find that with the madame glam madame madame glam products it really just does the work for me and i love that i love that for me okay now we're gonna start with the painting from when you start to when you're finished you want to leave a little little tiny bit of a border between your cuticle and where the paint starts there should be just like a whisper of nail in between there. This will keep it on. When it grows out, there will be no pulling from the skin. Having a really good cleanup brush. I prefer an angled little thin skinny brush, but you can Google and find cleanup brushes online before you put it in and cure it, making sure that there is a nice clean edge from your cuticle all the way around your nail bed. That is going to help so much, so much. I think that is the number one thing to keep them from lifting, space is good. NASA, I need space. This is not like a, a sexy number. I have eight tips, but five. Do try to keep thinner coats of paint. If you do have really thin nails, instead of doing a really, really thick coat, I would do multiple thin layers of the base coat and or color if you want more of that color coverage. Just because when you're sticking it into the lamp, this is my, this is my brain, I am not a professional, but in my brain and what I've found is that the thinner the coats, no matter how many you do, they get more evenly cured in the lamp if it's not super thick and blobby. Otherwise they can get kind of soft and I feel like you want to have a really nice cure. Doing multiple thin layers also protects your nail when you buff it down and you do removal and because I feel like it cures more evenly because of the thinner layers it stays on it keeps your nails protected and it's I just feel like it's a little bit harder I don't have any scientific evidence fight with me in the comments below it's so good for my algorithm but please don't say anything mean about me I'm sensitive that was definitely number six <laughs> not five follow me I'm really good at this seven before before you seal the nail, I said that this was gonna be in order, I guess it's not. Before you cure your nail, paint the edge of the finger, the finger, the flat edge of where your nail ends. Do this with as little product on the brush as possible because you don't want it to slip underneath your nail and then get all gloopy and glue your nail to the skin. You can always prevent that with a cleanup brush. Sealing the nail tips is so game changing, especially if you're finding your nails are lifting from the bottom. It happens to me a lot if I don't seal the ends of my nails and then I get them wet, water will come in, your nail expands, and then it just kind of lifts and breaks apart the bond between the paint and the nail. I don't do it in between every single layer. I mostly just do it with the base and the top coat because I'm lazy, but if you really want them to stay on there, I would do it with every single layer. Of course, this is a lot harder if you have shorter nails. So in that case, a cleanup brush would be spectacular and very helpful, dipped in I was gonna say avocado, alcohol. I'm super vegan. The last tip I have for you is probably the most annoying one because you probably already know this. Don't pick at the nails. I know it's really fun to just pop those bad boys off. It's so bad for your nails, especially if you're doing this at home. And if you start picking at the nail yourself and then water and air and bacteria get in there, you can get like some not so great things 
Bruin under that nail. We are all human. It is okay if your guilty pleasure is picking at your gel nails. So if you find yourself picking at the nails, I would say just start removing them right away. Easier said than done because taking off gel nails is such a pain in the butt, but it might save your hand and your nail health in the long run. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Now I'm going to show you everything really quick in my kit. I will link everything below. First off, I just have this craft board. I use it a lot for cutting uh, fabric. I like to put this down and then put a paper towel on top of it just to protect my beautiful table that I do this at. Why am I choosing to lift this up like this? This is my caboodle. It used to be filled with makeup and then I realized I don't go anywhere. So now it's been switched to my, my nail salon kit. The first thing I have to highly recommend is if you're saving any of your old makeup brushes, this is their time. Um, I have this old Anastasia Beverly Hills brow thing. It's from the dip brow. I really hated the dip brow. Love the brush. Never use this on my face, but it's so good as a, as a cleanup brush. This is like probably an old naked palette brush, but I really like this flat bit at the end. I like drop a little bit underneath the nail. It's really nice to just... I dip these in alcohol, so I have a little bowl for my alcohol, for my rubbing alcohol, not my drinking alcohol. These brushes are so cute. There are two dotting tools on the ends of different brushes that are great for French dots, polka dots, stripes, lines, which are different. Stripes are thicker. I like the stiffness of them. I like that they're synthetic because I am a filthy vegan. And they're pastel, and I am a little whore for pastel. It's an A++ in my books. The next thing I got was just a buffer kit. It comes with nail files, buffers, this little doodad that like shines and buffs your nails just in case you just want really shiny natural nails. I really like the buffer on this because it has two different grits, a finer and a rougher one and it's really good for prepping the nails. Along with this cuticle trimmer, I'm a little too scared to use this, but sometimes you have little like, little floopity dupes that need tending to. It also came with this cuticle pusher that I have not once used, but everything else is great in the kit, so worth it. <laughs> One day I'll use it, maybe. Another thing I got was a removal set that have these little nail clips along with this incredibly good tool to remove the gel. I Something about how this tool is shaped as opposed to the cuticle pusher just takes off the gel flawlessly without scratching my nail. And then these little clips are just great because they're cute. I don't have to use and reuse aluminum foil over and over again. And I feel like they really, really hold the acetone on. And then it came with a couple of sheets and I really like these because I find them to be a little lower lint than a cotton ball. They're not perfect. They're not like a paper towel lint-free, but they're really good and really useful. Now, this next thing is totally not necessary, but I liked it and wanted it and just thought I needed it. It's just a little push thing of acetone. It opens up and you push it down with a little one of these pads and you soak it and I just feel like it speeds up the process. I feel like I'm not using too much or too little acetone when I'm putting it on to soak everything off. I don't know, it just helps in the removal process. So not necessary, but I really wanted it, so I got it. I want it, I got it. And then I got extra of these little gauze things. Also totally extra. I have just one of these. It's just like a compact. I like to use it to just put on little blobs of polish so I don't have to keep opening and reopening the bottle if I'm doing designs and it keeps lint from getting in the bottle and I feel like it ruins less of the polish and increases longevity, but you can use like an old CD, anything flat and plastic. That is everything. As I said before, everything is going to be linked down below. I hope this helped you out. Please let me know if you have any other questions that I didn't answer or if you need any other tips on how to do your nails. I'm not an expert, but I can help you figure out how to do this on your own. If I can leave you with one little piece of advice that I feel like helped me is that I'm not doing this to be 
perfect and like be salon quality. I'm doing this because it's just a really fun creative outlet for me to do something that I also like wearing. And it's a really fun way for me to express myself. So I look forward to it. Even when I mess up and I break a nail, I like look forward to redoing them because it's just a little me time where I set up my Netflix and or I like light a candle and I just give the dog a bone so he leaves me alone for a little bit and just soak up my me time. It just feels good. Give yourself the time and the space to enjoy it because it's fun. If you like doing nails and you wanna do all this and you're looking up videos, like have fun with it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any other questions or just say hi to me. Be on the internet is lonely. I love you so much. I don't even know you. Why am I saying you I love you? I don't know how to end videos.